بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وخاتم النبيين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا المصطفى أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين ونريد أن نمن على الذين ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين ونجعلهم ونجعلهم الوارثين ونمكن لهم في الأرض ونمكن لهم في الأرض ونمكن لهم في الأرض ونري فرعون وهامان وجنودهما منهم ما كانوا
ونمكن لهم في الأرض ونري فرعون وهامان وجنودهما ونري فرعون وهامان وجنودهما منهم ما كانوا يحذرون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وال محمد Hakima, the aunt of Imam al Jawad, Salamullah alayh, says, I came to visit Al Imam Al Askari, Salawatullahi wa Salamuhu alayh, on the eve of the 15th of Sha'ban. Allahumma oh. salli She said, as the Maghrib, the time of Maghrib approached, I was fasting on that day, so I told him, Ya ibn Rasulillah, my dear nephew, give me the permission to go back home. He said, my aunt, Amma, stay with us tonight. Have your iftar here and stay the night with us. She said, why? He said, because tonight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us with a son who will fill this earth with justice the way it would be filled with oppression. Qalat mimman. She said, from who? Which of your wives? Qala min Nagjis. He said, from Nagjis. She said, I went to Nagjis. I looked at her. I turned her around. She had no signs of pregnancy. I came back to him. Qult. I said to him, she has no signs of pregnancy. قَالَ إِنَّ فِيهَا خُصْلَةً مِّنْ أُمِّ مُوسَى She has one of the characteristics of the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Because at the time of Musa, when Musa heard from some of the Arafin, those people who look into the astronomy, when they told Fir'aun that a son or a child, a boy will be born at so and so time, and he will overturn your kingdom. So he started killing all the boys, everyone. Any boy who gets born, when they see a mother is pregnant, they monitor her until she gives birth. If she gives birth to a girl, they let her live. If it's a boy, he gets killed. It is said 20,000 boys were killed at that time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants to will something, if there is a will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill that will. And that is what the human being doesn't understand. The human being thinks that he can stand in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal billah. Or sometimes, here I would like to add a footnote. It may sound as a digression, but it's not. I'll come back to the topic here. Sometimes even us, we sometimes don't have our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find, for example, a youth who wants to go for an interview, a job interview. The interviewer is a female. She extends her hands to shake his hand. He gets embarrassed. He says, if I don't shake her hand, then I might not get the job. When in fact, his trust should be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know a mu'min friend of mine. He said, I went for an interview to medical school, medical school. And those of you who live in this country know how difficult it is to get the interview for medical school. He said, I went there and there were several interviewers. Two of them were females, doctors. They came to me and I told them, I'm sorry. My religion doesn't allow me to shake hands with the ladies. I apologize, but I'll shake hands with the men. I am sorry. And he said, I didn't care. I get accepted or I don't get accepted. As long as I'm pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, three months later, I get admission letter. You're in. And now he's already 
studying. MashaAllah. Sometimes a person gets invited for office party and he thinks that, you know what, if I don't go, my connections with the employees and my bosses will not work very well. Even though there's alcohol there, music is there, a setting is not an Islamic setting. But a person says, I'm afraid if I don't go, it will harm my reputation with the company. That's when a person doesn't have his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we put our desire before that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people invite for wedding receptions, wedding receptions, where it's a mixed gathering, music is played, people may not be dressed appropriately, some of them may not, some of the sisters, but they say we're embarrassed because these are our relatives and if we don't go, they might boycott us. Well, they should be boycotted. They should be boycotted. Let them have the reception alone so that people realize that, you know what, if we do this against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the will of Allah, then no one is going to come. So then people will start having Islamic weddings and Islamic receptions. These are not excuses. We have to put Allah's will. We have to ask ourselves a question every time. Believe me. This invitation I'm getting, this place I'm getting invited to, or this situation, Imam al-Mahdi salamullahi alayhi, or Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, would they go there or not? If I were to go there, would they be there or not? That is the question we have to ask. If it is a place where they will go there, they don't mind being there, a wedding reception where, for example, the remembrance of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam is mentioned, where it is, for example, the Islamic attire is maintained, the hurma, the integrity of Islam and the sanctity of Islam is maintained. Yes, why not? But when it's places where we think Imam is not going to go there, then we also have to put our trust in Allah and we have to follow our Imams alayhim salam And I'll come to that, inshallah, at the end of the lecture. So, Fir'aun thought he could stop in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided, decreed. Indeed, the mother of Musa had no signs of pregnancy whatsoever until she gave birth to Musa alayhi salam. And the story is mentioned in the Quran, surah number 28, Al-Qasas. So Imam al-Askari alayhi salam told his aunt Hakima that Narjis alayhi salam has one of the signs of Umm Musa, the mother of Musa. She has no signs of pregnancy. Why? Because the Khalifa, the Abbasi Caliph, he knew that this is the 11th Imam. He will be the father of the 12th Imam. He knew that. So he kept spies in the house of the Imam. Some of them were maids. Some of them were servants. He told these maids, observe the wives of the Imam. If you see any of them getting pregnant, let us know. So we go kill her. That was the plan. It was under constant monitoring. Several times they would come to the house of the Imam and they do a random inspection. Just like we see some random inspections sometimes in airports. So similarly, random inspection to see if any of his wives is pregnant. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blinded their eyes. So he safeguarded her. Then Hakima said, so it will happen. He said, yes, ya amma, it will happen at around the time of dawn. So she said, I stayed the night. I prayed salat at tahajjud. I rested for some time. Then I got up, continued to pray my salat. And the whole time I'm looking at Nargis. She was resting. She had no signs. As the dawn was approaching, some doubt started to enter into my mind. Is she really going to give birth? At that moment, I heard my nephew calling me, Ya Amma, don't have any doubts. It will happen. He will be born. She said then, I was reminded, and I knew he never tells anything but the truth. So I waited until it was about the time of dawn when I saw Nergis waking up and she called me, I'm a help. So I came to help her. 
just like the females help those who are trying to give birth. And then she said, a light, a nur, came out. And all of the sudden, after the nur vanished, that big shining light, I looked and I saw a boy doing sujood, saying, وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ He recited the ayah that I just, we just recited earlier here. And we would like to send our blessings. Ayah number 5 of Surah number 28, Al-Qasas. And we want to send our blessings upon those who have been weakened on the earth. Those who were weakened. And we will make them. We'll make them imams leaders and we will make them the inheritors those who will inherit the earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse and we want to enable them on this earth they will have the power and we want to show Fir'aun any oppressive tyrant king on this earth like Fir'aun any oppressive minister the minister of Fir'aun, Haman, and their army. We want to show them. We will show them of what they were scared of. Fir'aun was scared of the birth of Musa, but it happened. And eventually his kingdom was finished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every Fir'aun of every time will get his time as well. And he will be finished as well. Imam Salamullah alayhi then stayed in the house of his father, Imam al-Askari alayhi salam, for five years. Then Imam al-Askari salamullah alayhi was poisoned. During these five years, Imam showed his son to few of the sincere mu'mineen only. The sincere mu'mineen. Those whom he could trust. Otherwise, he kept him in hiding in the house. One of those mu'mineen, he said, I served in the house of Imam al-Askari alayhi salam. He told me one day, I'm going to give you some letters. Take them to Baghdad, to some individuals. Collect what they have to give you. Then come back. It will take you 15 days to go to Baghdad and come back. When you arrive here on the 15th day back to Samarra, you'll see that I have been killed I would have died by then he said so whom should I be following after you Ibn Rasulullah he said the one who will ask you to give him what I've just given you the one who's asked gonna ask you to give him this he will be the one whom you will follow and the one who will pray on my body and he will also know how much you're carrying he will know exactly how much you're carrying those three characteristics those three signs. He said, then I left to Baghdad. I came back in 15 days and indeed Imam had been killed. Imam was martyred. So I came and we were waiting. At that time, the brother of Imam Al-Askari came to pray. I saw a young boy coming out and he came to me and he said, give me what your, my father has given you. And entrusted you with. So I gave it to him. Then he turned to his uncle and he said, Ya Am, you know that only a ma'soom prays on the ma'soom. So step aside. It is my, it is me who will pray on my father. So the uncle stepped aside. And Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam prayed. So he says, That's the second sign. And then he told me, There is this much money in your bag that you're carrying here. So give it to me as well. He said, I gave it to him and I said to him, you are the Imam indeed. And then Imam at that age, who, which was five years old, he is the youngest Imam to claim the Imam at the age of five. Imam then alayhi salam, out of fear of persecution, because immediately afterwards he was about to be killed. 
So he goes into Ghayba, the Ghayba to Suhra, the short occultation, which lasted for about 72 years, during which time he assigned or appointed four representatives. And he basically communicated with the Shia through these four representatives. Here is something that I want to highlight. Our Imams, alayhim salam trained the Shia for the Ghayba. How so? At the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, people had access to the Imam anytime they wanted to see him. Same thing with Imam Imam al-Kalim alayhi salam, Imam al-Rubha salam Allah alayhi, Imam al-Jawad. But then after Imam al-Jawad, the Imams were summoned to where? Samarra. Imam al-Hadi was summoned to Samarra. And then Imam al-Askari. Why is he named Askari? Because he was put in a city known as the city of Askar. What does Askar mean? The army, the soldiers. That was the city of the soldiers. In other words, Imam Salamullah Alayhi was surrounded by an army. It was a military compound. So slowly, the Imams were isolated from the people. In fact, Imams Ali Salam Al Askari, he wrote a letter once to his companions. He said, when I walk on the streets, don't even look at me in the eye. Because the spies are even looking. Who is looking at me in the eye? Whomever makes a signal to me with his eyes, they'll capture him and they'll kill him. To that extent. You know, at the time when we read this in the books, it was difficult for us to understand. But when we see the tyrants today, some of the tyrants of today, who is living in the countries somewhere, and those who have also gone, alhamdulillah, to Jahannam, we see that's true. Indeed, they used to capture people who just looked with their eyes. They would be captured and killed. So that was gradual. And then Imam alayhi salam, when he went, he went first into Ghaybatul Suhra. Again, he appointed four representatives where he told people, you communicate to me through these four until the fourth one died. Then Imam Salamullah alayhi went into Ghaybatul Kubra. Before going into Ghaybatul Kubra, he left us with the hadith that my fuqaha or the fuqaha Basically the maraji'. They are the hujjah. They are the proof. So you have to follow them. And that is one of the reasons. One of the proofs. One of the evidence that we have to follow a, a marji'. A mujtahid. A person has either he himself has to become a mujtahid. Or has to follow a mujtahid. So. Imam Salamullah alayh. His ghayba was gradual. Our, the ghayba of our imam, they prepared the Shia slowly for the ghayba of the imam alayhi salam. Now the big question is, why this ghayba? Why? Many people are asking, how come it is that we are at a time that we don't observe the imam, we don't see the imam? And there are several reasons, mu'mineen and mu'minat. We will touch upon a couple of them because of the time restraint. But Imam al-Sadiq salamullah alayh was asked one day, he was asked, Ya ibn Rasulillah, when this Imam, the 12th Imam of yours, when he goes into Ghaybah, occultation, how will people benefit from him? His response was, on a cloudy day, do you see the sun? The man said, no, Ya ibn Rasulillah, we don't see the sun on a cloudy day. He said, but can you tell whether it is day or night? He said, yes, indeed, we can still observe the sun. We can see it. But we can observe it. He said the presence of the Imam alayhi salam will be observed even though you cannot see him. But you will observe his presence. And indeed, the presence of the 12th Imam is observed. The blessings of the 12th Imam is observed. Even though we don't see him. It is said once, one day, a Shaykh al-Mufid, may Allah bless his soul, a great alim, great scholar, Shaykh al-Mufid, one day a man came to him and he said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, my wife is pregnant and she has passed away. I could see the child is moving in her womb. What shall I do? The feet is still moving. He said, maybe you should bury the wife because you don't want to mutilate the body of the mu'mina who has passed away. This man went... And he said, okay, he went. On his way, a man comes to him, approaches him. He tells him, oh man, 
do not bury the body of the wife. Open the body, take the son or the child out, and then bury the body. Because the child is alive. He said, okay, I'll do that then. And he said, he went. And that's what they did. He opened the body of the woman. They got the child. The child was alive. And then they buried the body. The news reached Sheikh Al-Mufid. The news reached him. He said, I was about to kill a soul. So he closed his doors. He said, I will not give fatwas anymore. I was about to kill someone. He receives a letter from the Imam, Ajjalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, telling him, إِلَى الرَّجُلِ الْمُفِيدِ إِلَى الرَّجُلِ السَّدِيدِ الشَّيْخِ الْمُفِيدِ To the man who is guided, the man who is a benefit, Mufid means benefit. And hence he was given this title of a Shaykh al-Mufid. Imam gave him this title. He said, you open your doors for answering, for ijtihad, and we are there to help, to help you. We are there to protect you. The same thing is narrated by Al-Muqaddas Al-Aghdabili, may Allah bless his soul. Muqaddas Al-Aghdabili was one of the great ulamas in Najaf. One day his son, sorry, one of his students, my apologies, one of his students who used to stay in the haram of Imam Amir al-Mu'mini sallallahu alayhi Today, if you go to the haram, you see there are certain rooms around the dharih. These rooms, today they're utilized as offices or something. Back then, a few hundred years ago, they used to be residences for students of Hawza. They used to stay in these dorms. One day, one of the students said, in the middle of the night, I saw the doors which were closed and locked. They used to lock the doors at night. I saw them open. And I saw somebody walking, going towards the shrine, towards the Vavarih of Amir al mumini Salamullahi Alayhi. He said, so I followed this person. I found that it was Al-Muqaddas Al-Aghdabili, our teacher, this alim, this scholar, this faqih. I followed him. I saw him going close to the shrine, to the Vavarih. He said something. Then he came out and he left the shrine. I followed him. I followed him until I saw him going someplace. So I was following him. He didn't know I was following him. Then I saw him meeting with someone. After he met with someone, that somebody left. And Muqaddas al-Aghdabili was heading back. At that point, I coughed. I coughed. So he turned. He said, who's there? I couldn't hide anymore. So I told him, teacher, this is me your student. He said, what were you doing? He said, to be honest with you, I was following you. Since when? Since you actually entered the shrine. I saw everything. He said, well, I will tell you what's happening with one condition. You promise that you never tell anyone until after I die. He said, I promise you. He said, I was going through the books of law, fiqh, I came across some questions that I couldn't answer. So I said, let me go to Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, and he will answer me. So I went to the shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the gates opened. I went and I asked Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, this is the taqwa, huh? this is the taqwa. When we stand before Imam Hussein, salamullahi alayhi, and we say, ashhadu annaka kunta nooran fil aslaab al-shamikha, wal arham al-mutahara. And then we say, وَقَلْبِي بِكُمْ مُؤْمِنٌ oh, My heart is believing in you. We believe in you. They're alive. Yes, physically they're not alive. But their spirit is alive. They can hear us. They can respond to us. But it is our aqidah, our faith. Unfortunately, our hearts are covered with sins. Unfortunately. And these sins prevent us. They, they become like a veil, a curtain. Depriving us from seeing the Imams, السلام, from hearing them. Otherwise, if we clean this heart, cleanse it, then you'll see the miracles. Nonetheless, he said, I went and I approached Imam, Salamullah Alayh, Amir al Mu'mineen, and I said, Ya, oh, said, ya Amir al Mu'mineen, I have these questions. 
I heard a voice calling from the Dariq saying to me, go and my son, Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadar will answer you. Go to so-and-so place. So that's when I left. I left and I went and waited there. The man you saw there, that was our 12th Imam, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. He responded to my questions. He answered me. And now I'm heading back. So the Imam alayhi salam is there. Yes, we can't see him, but we can observe his blessings. We can observe his blessings. So the Imams alayhi salam prepared us for this ghaybah. And the reason, one of the reasons for this ghaybah, my brothers and sisters, is the persecution. Persecution. Imam's father was killed. His grandfather was killed. In fact, all of our Imams, ma minna illa masmumun aw maktul. The hadith says, none of us is, is either, none of us died naturally. We are either killed by poison or by the sword. That's the hadith. Indeed, if you take a look at all the 12 Imams, except our 12 Imam, Ajala Ta'ala Fawajah Sharif, all those 11, none of them died naturally. So there's persecution. He would have been killed. So he has to go into ghaybah, otherwise he'll get killed. And this is nothing that is an embarrassment or a shame. Musa alayhi salam, when Fir'aun was running after him, what did he do? They ran away. Right? The children of Bani Israel, they ran away. When you see death is coming after you, you have to defend yourself. One of the ways that you have to save your life. You got to go away. This doesn't mean that the person is, God forbid, a coward wal billah. Or is weak, wal-ayadu billah. No. But he has to save his life. So he goes into ghaybah. That's one of the reasons for the occultation. A second reason for the occultation, mu'minin and mu'minat, is the imtihan, the bala. The bala. Allah wants to test us. Wants to test the faith of the mu'mineen. Which one of the mu'mineen will believe in him? Which will not believe in him? In this imam. Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, Ya Musa, I want you to come and meet with me on Mount Sinai for 30 days. So tell your people that you'll be meeting me for 30 days. So Musa told his people, I will be leaving you for 30 days. During these 30 days, who will be my successor? Who will be over supervising, overlooking? Harun alayhi salam, my brother. Harun will be overlooking everything during my absence. When, uh, when the Prophet Musa السلام, arrives at Mount Sinai, Allah tells him, Ya Musa, we're going to add 10 more days. We're going to add 10 more days. It is during these 10 days, brothers and sisters, that the Samari managed to fool these individuals. Only in these 10 days, huh? So the first 30 days, they were okay because Musa السلام, told them, I'll come back in 30 days. When they did not see Musa after 30 days, then Samari started to plot and cook whatever he was about to cook. He started making things. And people started to have doubts. Well, Musa said he'll be back after 30 days. He didn't come back. So he said, you know what? This is your God. You have to believe in this. The cow that he made of gold it is during these 10 days of the ghaybah of Musa alayhi salam where it is said about 600,000 people 600,000 reverted to worship this cow this statue, this idol and the only people who remain about 12,000 12,000 people remained loyal out of 600,000, during how many? 10 days only. 10 days. That is one of the reasons here for this ghaybah. People will be questioning why, why Allah wants to see are we among the 12,000 the 12, or are we among the 600,000? How many people believe in Imam al Mahdi? Sharif? How many people follow Imam al Mahdi? Sharif? Because people sometimes we say we believe in him. We love him, but unfortunately we don't follow him. 
We don't do the things that he wants us to do. Why? Because he's ghaybah, we don't see him. That is the test. Do you believe in him as if you see him? Is that our faith in the imam or not? That's a question we have to ask ourselves. That's what we have to ask ourselves. If imam today comes to me and says, Fulan, I don't want you to do ghibah anymore. I don't want you to go and make problems between mu'mineen anymore. Will I do it? Will I listen to him? If he comes, well now I have to do it even before he asks me. Because I know this is what he pleases, he, it pleases him. So that's what we have to ask ourselves, mu'mineen and mu'minat. Bala, imtihan. When Imam went into Ghaybatul Sughra, he chose four representatives. One of the representatives he chose was a man by the name of Al Hussein ibn Rawh. Hussein ibn Rawh was a faqih alim, but he was not a first class alim. He was not very popular. People did not know of him, many people. There were at the time two ulama who were very popular. Two. One by the name of Al Shalmaghani. Al Shalmaghani was very popular, scholar, faqih, alim. Many people followed him. And there was another one by the name of al Nobakhti. Nobakhti was the teacher of a Sheikh al Kulaini who wrote Al Kafi, one of the books of Hadith. His teacher, al Nobakhti. When al Shalmaghani heard that Al Hussein bin Rawh has been chosen as the representative of the Imam, he became upset. This Alim, this Faqih, became upset. He said, Who is he? Why would he get chosen? I have all the followers. I have the one, the prestige. And he did not accept Al Hussein ibn Rawh as a representative. He failed. Whereas Al Nawbakhti, the other alim, the other faqih, they came to him. They said, You are the faqih, you're the alim. But the Imam chose Al Hussein ibn Rawh. He said, We follow what he chooses. Because they know whom to choose. Yeah. So you see the differences? One man passed, one failed. And those people were not ordinary, huh? Scholars. That is what the test is. And each and every one of us have a test. Allah will test us with things that are dear to us. Allah knows what is dear to us. Some people, money is dear to them. So Allah will test them with the money. Allah will say, pay khums. This is the haqq of the imam. But they say, no, no, no. Haqq of the imam, I'll take care of it. Inshallah, imam is merciful, generous. Inshallah, keep it in my stomach here, in my pocket. That's. Some people, no. It is other desires. Other desires. Not wearing the hijab, for example, that's something. Allah tests them with. And some say, ladies say, you know, it's okay. No problem. Imam is Rahim. He's forgiving. He's merciful. Our Imam. No problem. That's test. Allah tests every individual with a test. And we have to ask ourselves how much are we prepared for the Imam? How much? Some of us, we are not willing to sacrifice our sleep to wake up for Salat al Subh. You think we're ready to sacrifice our lives for Imam? If we can't even sacrifice sleep? You know, Allah, when He mentions stories in the Quran, He mentions them for a reason. Have you heard of the story of Talut and Jalut? Talut, the children of, his, of Israel, they ask for someone who can help them fight. This is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. I'll briefly mention it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them Talut as a leader. Talut takes his men into the desert, ready to fight against Jalut, which was, had a big army. They're thirsty, they're tired, they're weak. He takes them across a river, and he says what to them? He tells them, you're tired, you're weak, you're not allowed to drink from this river except for one drink. You just put your hand, whatever your hand can carry, that's it. Otherwise, you're not allowed. If you do so and drink, you're not going to be a part of my army. That was a test. Because if those individuals are not willing to sacrifice their desire for thirst, 
how can they be willing to sacrifice their love, their lives, for the sake of their, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They won't. And hence, a handful of people succeeded and did not drink. The rest all failed and drank from the river. Are we from those or are we from the few? Imam Hussein alayhi salam left Mecca with 1,000 men. 1,000 men when he left from Mecca. You're familiar with the story. He was performing Hajj, but then he changed his Hajj to Umrah, right? And he left. When he left, he had 1,000 men. On the day of Ashura, how many? 70, 72, say 100, because we make the math easier this way. 100. So from 1,000 to the 100, how many are we down to? 90%. Are we among the 10% or are we among the 90%? Brothers and sisters, these are realities, huh? These are realities. That's why Imam al Hussein Salamullah alayhi says, Anas Abidu Dunya, what Dinu Laikun Allah al Sinatihim, Faida Muhisu bil Bala Kalla Dayanun. He says, People are the slaves of Dunya, they're the worshippers of Dunya. And deen, religion, is something that's easy said on their tongues. It's easy. But when they are tested with difficulty, when the pure ones start to surface, you'll find there are very few individuals. Indeed, out of a thousand leaves, only a hundred. So are we among the thousand, the nine hundred, or are we among the one hundred? These are all questions we have to ask ourselves, mu'mineen and mu'minat. It is the eve of the wilada of our 12th Imam Ajal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And we pray to Allah constantly that Ya Allah make us among His Shia, make us among His followers, make us among those who die, be with Him. O oh Allah, if we are dead, resurrect us from our graves so that we fight with the Imam Ajal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. This raj'ah, the calling back which will happen, insha'Allah, for the utmost believers, those who have utmost taqwa. They will come back, according to the ahadith, raj'a. They'll be revived from their death. Some mu'mineen, who are truly mu'mineen, true followers, true shia, the likes of Habib ibn Mabahir, the likes of Salman, those will be revived again. Abu Dhar, these will be revived again. And also the enemies, the utmost enemies of Ahlul Bayt will also be revived again. Why? The mu'mineen will see the pleasure of the adl, the justice being served. They'll be happy. And those hypocrites, those enemies will see, they'll get disheartened, their hearts broken. That's what they fought against, but Allah made it prevail. The religion that they fought against prevailed. Justice prevailed. So Allah wants to punish them in dunya by making them see it and observe it. But in order to be that, brothers and sisters, we have to really sacrifice what we love. So we have to start step by step. These are among the reasons. One is fear of persecution for the Imam, and one is the test. We have to prepare ourselves. The preparation comes slowly. How? By giving away things that we love in dunya. What do we love? If a person loves sleep, then see if you can deprive yourself of sleep a little bit and wake up for Salatul Layl. And then pray Salatul Subh on time. If a person likes his business, see if you can close that business and come to Jumu'ah. Salatul Jumu'ah. Or you can leave that business aside and pray your Salat on time. If a person loves money, let him give the Sadaqat. Not just the Zakat, but the Sadaqat too, Sadaqah, which is not mandatory. That a person has to give. If a lady doesn't wear the hijab, she has to sacrifice, put on this hijab. Because then we can be proud, mu'mineen and mu'minat. Imagine, imagine, imagine Imam has a table right outside there, this mosque, and he says, now I'm calling for Shia. I'm calling for people to establish the dawla al-Islamiyah, to establish the justice. I need people. He's having a desk there, and people want to register. Can I really come and tell him, yes, Ibn Rasulullah, I'm there, can you choose me? 
Or would I be embarrassed and run away? The way I behave, the way I talk, is it a way that pleases the Imam or not? These are all questions, realities we have to ask ourselves. Easier said than done. But it's doable. It's doable. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq, inshallah, to be among the Shia of the Imam Ajal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Bi barakat al salati ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salliya Rabbana Salliya Rabbana Ala Muhammad Wa Ali Ahmad Salliya Rabbana Salliya Rabbana Ala Muhammad Wa Ali Ahmad Salli Salliya Rabbana Salliya على محمد وآل على محمد وآل لشهر شعبان فضل ليس نحصيه شهر أتى مولد المهدي لنا فيه شهر كريم حوى فخرا بمولده فطاب فما شهر يضاهي شهر كريم حوى فخرا بمولده فيه فطاب فما شهر يضاهي صل يا ربنا صل يا ربنا على محمد و على محمد على ألم ترى قسمة الأرزاق فيه بما حوى وبالفضل قد حفت لياليه به تولد نجم الفجر من مضر مهدينا خير مقصود لراجيه مهدينا خير مقصود لراجيه صل يا صل يا ربنا على محمد وآل أحمد على محمد على مولا كأنك تتلو حين تذكره آية السجود علينا إذ تسمي مولا كأنك تتلو حين تذكره آية السجود علينا إذ تسمي الحجة القائم المهدي من ظهرت آياته والت قدر معالي الحجة القائم المهدي ما ظهرت آياته والت قدر معالي صل يا ربنا صل يا ربنا على محمد على محمد على محمد وآل أحمد اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا 
برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا حجة ابن الحسن أيها القائم المنتظر المهدي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها اشفع لنا عند الله يا وجيها اشفع لنا عند الله اللهم بصاحب الزمان اجعلنا من شيعة صاحب الزمان يا الله اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا بصاحب الزمان يا الله اللهم أرينا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرنة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه اللهم إنا نسألك بدولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم وعرف بيننا وبينه اللهم واقضي حوائجنا بحقه اللهم وارحمنا به يا الله رب اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء إلهنا مولانا بفاطمة الزهراء ارزقنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح أموات الجالسين والحاضرين رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, on behalf of the Executive Committee, I'd like to wish you all Kushali Mubarak on this auspicious eve of the celebration of the birth of our 12th Imam, Imam Mehdi Ajallallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. <coughs> May Allah continue to accept our du'as may he, and may he continue to shower his mercy upon us. Uh, just to inform you that uh, today the program is a little bit different. After the qasidas, we will have about five, ten minute break where you could do wadu and prepare for Maghrib and Isha prayers. And there after the Maghrib and Isha prayers, we will have the refreshments. Inshallah, today we will have pizza and it is from Al-Amin Pizza. I know you all love Amin, Al -Amin, uh, Amin Pizza. So that's what it is for you guys. And we have some refreshments. We will start the Amal for the 15th night of Shaban at approximately 10.45 p.m. And for those who are viewing us uh, from home, please uh, do not uh, go away, tune with us. We will continue with the Amal and it will be broadcast all the way till the end of the Amal. And Sheikh Dr. Usama Al-Attar will be conducting the Amal. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. Muhammad Ali Muhammad Salawat. Chanda Shah Sarkar Imam Zamana Allah Salatu wa Salam ki shan me. Ek dood bhej de Muhammad Ali Muhammad.
آیا جہاں میں نور ہدایت کا پاس بان آیا جہاں میں نور ہدایت کا پاس بان دین خدا کا منتظم شریعت کا پاس بان دین خدا کا منتظم شریعت کا پاس بان حجت حجت خدا پاک کی جد ہے رسول پاک حجت خدا پاک کی جد ہے رسول پاک یہ پانچ بارہ چودہ کی عظمت کا پاس بان یہ پانچ بارہ چودہ کی عظمت کا پاس بان اور جو ہیں صفح حسین پر نمازی ہے روزہ دار جو ہیں صفح حسین پر نمازی ہے روزہ دار مولا میرا ہے ان کی شفاعت کا پاس بان مولا میرا ہے ان کی شفاعت کا پاس بان اور شیر دیکھیں کہ کوئی شک کرے رسول کی اسمت پہ کس طرح کوئی شک کرے رسول کی اسمت پہ کس طرح ہوتا امام ہی ہے رسالت کا پاس بان ہوتا امام ہی ہے رسالت کا پاس بان اور دیکھیں کہ گر ہو بھی جائے یہ جہاں منکر علی کا تو گر ہو بھی جائے یہ جہاں منکر علی کا تو تو ہی بہت ہے اس کی ولایت کا پاس بان تو ہی بہت ہے اس کی ولایت کا پاس بان اور اسرار نے لگایا امامت پہ جو عروب اسرار نے لگایا امامت پہ جو عروب سب سن رہا ہے سن لے تہارت کا پاس بان سب سن رہا ہے سن لے تہارت کا پاس بان اور اسلام کو حیات ہے روز حشر تلک اسلام کو حیات ہے روز حشر تلک زندہ ہے جد پاک کی محمد محنت کا پاس بان زندہ ہے جد پاک کی محنت کا پاس بان اور شیر دیکھیں کہ جس کو بخار چڑھتا ہے حیدر کے نام سے جس کو بخار چڑھتا ہے حیدر کے نام سے ہے غیر کوئی اس کی طبیعت کا پاس بان جس کو بخار چڑھتا ہے حیدر کے نام سے ہے غیر کوئی اس کی طبیعت کا پاس بان اور اشتر رکھے خدا کی مشیت سے بیر جو اشتر رکھے خدا کی مشیت سے بیر جو وہ ہوگا وہ خود ہی اپنی خباست کا پاس بان مر محمد علی محمد صلی اللہ افضل السلام محمد و آل محمد آپ پر درود اور سلام اے میرے امام اے میرے امام آپ پر درود اور سلام اے میرے امام اے میرے امام بس یہی صدا ہے صبح و شام اے میرے امام اے میرے امام آپ پر درود اور سلام اے میرے امام اے میرے آپ ہی کے آسرے پہ جی رہے ہیں ہم آپ آئیں گے تو دور ہوں گے رنج و غم کر رہے ہیں التجا گلام اے میرے امام اے میرے امام آپ پر درود اور سلام اے میرے امام اے میرے کر رہے ہیں اس لیے ظہور کی دعا ہو ہمیں بھی تیری دید کا شرف عطا چاہے پھر ہو زندگی تمام اے میرے امام اے میرے امام آپ پر درود اور سلام اے میرے امام اے میرے امام تیری راہ دیکھنا فریضہ ہے میرا من کبت نہیں ہے یہ عریضہ ہے میرا پر رہا ہوں میں جو صبح و شام 
मेरे ईमान जा बजादारो मे ईमान आप पर दुरूद और सलाम ए मेरे ईमान ए मेरे हशर में हर एक पर अजीब वक्त था याद कुछ नहीं था इम्तिहान भी सख्त था बच गया में ले के तेरा नाम ए मेरे ईमा जाब जाब ए ईमा संत आप पर दुरूद और सलाम ए मेरे ईमा ए मेरे खाना खुदा को कैद से चुराइए मोला आइए अब आइए अब आइए लेके जुल्फिकार बेनियाम ए मेरे ईमाम ए मेरे ईमाम आप पर दुरूद और सलाम ए मेरे ईमाम ए मेरे ईमाम बस यही सदा है सुबह शाम ए मेरे ईमान ए मेरे ईमान आप पर दुरूद और सलाम ए मेरे ईमान ए मेरे ईमान अफजल सलाम मोहम्मद इनवाल मोहम्मद इलाही बाबी मारे दास दे बला जो भी मार हो जल्द पाए शफा इलाही बाराए इमाम जमान हमें हौल में शर से दे तू अमान कयामत में माशो रहो बाली उठे काब्र से कहते हम या है पाँच जवनो मिल चार दहतान आहमद वली जहरा वसन शबीर से ले थमाम जमान शबीर से ले थमाम जमान एक एक पे सदा सलावात परो सलावात सलावात के ओ स्पेनी सारे गोहर जो नबी है बोला दसीफात हुए सलावात सलावात तो सलाम या इमाम जमान फरमा जहूर या इमाम जमान सलावात फरज वहूरक वरहमतुल्ला वरकू